Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for joining. In this video we're taking a look at Reed's Regret, Damage and DPS with Particle Deconstruction, Triple Tap and the recently fixed Firing Light. While sticking to that combination, I'll be comparing a few different coil and battery perks to see if anything in particular stands out. Once that's done, and for the first time ever on this channel, I'll be testing damage numbers with weapons of light, reload speed from a loon as well etc, and comparing those to threaded needle under the same circumstances but with focusing lens. So. Let's get into those numbers, some of them being ridiculously high. Now initially the same standards apply as always, that being a single loader mod, no monster boost reserves and because testing was against Carl, everything had a major spec mod unless stated otherwise. First though, just how much has firing line increased damage by since the patch? Well, on the left there's a Reed's Regret with no firing line proc, and on the right is the exact same weapon with firing line active. While neither of these have accelerated or liquid coils, particle deconstruction is fully proc. Base damage came in at 65,196, while the firing line number was 79,071. That is an increase of 21.282%. This is the exact same increase or nearest damn it when either accelerated or liquid coils are present. With that quick bit out the way, let's start with liquid coils. So for anyone who doesn't know, this perk increases charge time but also damage. Typically this will decrease DPS slightly but increase total damage, which does technically improve ammo economy as you're doing more damage per round. Speaking of which, with firing line and particle deconstruction fully procced, that damage per round was 80,652. I could hold 20 in reserves and 5 in each magazine, but of course with triple tap, each magazine effectively increases to 7 if you land all precision shots. This meant 4 rounds of 7, so 28, and therefore, total damage from Reed's Regret came in at 2,258,256. Now all these tests have a round from Cartesian coordinates of fully proc particle deconstruction, which did 38,507, and brought total damage for the full test to 2,296,763. Now before we look at timings, I know what some might be thinking, why the round from Cartesian when testing firing line, which requires teammates to be nearby, so why can't they proc particle deconstruction? And that is a very valid point, I did it this way as it makes the numbers a little more comparable to other heavy linear fusion rifles, and if you do have another player to prop particle deconstruction, well be happy in the knowledge that you'll be doing slightly better DPS and much better burst DPS. So onto the timings, very straightforward with that infamous round from Cartesian followed by 28 rounds from Reed's Regret. Remember this is with triple tap so that mag size of 5 increases to 7 if you land all precision shots. Total time to fire all of those was 36.23 seconds which brought DPS to 63,394. Just for reference, Reed's Regret with liquid coils triple tap and Vorpal did 60,166. And now for accelerated coils, so I don't actually have one with these specific perks, but I do have one with accelerated alone. So if we apply the 21.28% increase from firing line to the base damage of accelerated, which was 63,892, we get 77,489. However, my good friend Kyoro, who I'm in a clan with, taking a screenshot of this, and he had the correct roll and confirmed the damage was 77,490, so a difference of just one, which will be due to some in-game rounding up going on in the background. Now quickly, I am going to include a small table that just shows the charge time, damage and percentage changes for these coil perks and without them, but that will be after we've tested them all first. So with this being the same as liquid coils regarding the number of rounds, that being 20 in reserves, but increasing to 28 due to triple tap and landing all precision shots of course, total damage for Reed's Regret alone was 2,169,720 at the round from Cartesian and that jumps up to 2,208,227. Timings are exactly the same, other than the fact that the weapon is now charging faster. Total time for me to do this came in at 34.02 seconds, meaning DPS was 64,910. Moving on now and it's enhanced battery, so this takes the magazine size from 5 to 6, and what this means for triple tap is that landing all precision shots provides 8 in the mag, so at this point it's still only rewarding an extra 2 rounds per mag. The problem here with a total of 20 in reserves after 3 mags of 6, 
There's a final one of two, therefore I'm omitting it from testing for this example. Damage per round was 79,071, and I tested this over three magazines of six, which increased to eight due to triple tap, making it 24 rounds in total. This brought damage from Reed's Regret 2, 1,897,704, plus that round from Cartesian, and total damage was 1,936,211. The timings were again straightforward, being just three magazines of eight. Total time to fire all of those, remember that's including a burst from Cartesian to prop particle deconstruction, came in at 28.75 seconds, meaning DPS was 67,346. So while this is over three magazines and not four, like liquid and accelerated, that will help a little with the average DPS, it's still a considerable jump. If I was to include the final mag of just two rounds, DPS was 65,204, so still extremely good. And finally, it's enhanced battery again, but now with a backup mag mod. I was going to test this with ionized battery here, but it didn't increase the magazine size any more than enhanced, so this perk would be absolutely worse due to its slowing down reload. Now enhanced with a backup mag mod increases the mag size to 7, and it's at this point now where triple tap can increase that to 10. Damage per round was 73,370. I could actually only hold 19 in reserves with a backup mag mod for some bizarre reason, but I have ignored that and just assumed 20. This meant the base magazine size was 7, 7 and 6. However, with triple tap, that increased to 10, 10 and 8. With this in mind, total damage from Reed's Regret here was 2,054,360, plus the round from Cartesian, and total damage for the test was 2,092,867. For the timings, well as always it was simple, I just kept firing until out of reserves, after that burst from Cartesian. Total time for me to do this was 33.08 seconds, meaning DPS came in at 63,267. Coming onto screen now is a small table just demonstrating the difference in damage and charge time between liquid coils, accelerated coils and enhanced battery, for anyone who's curious. Pause the video now if you want more time with this as we are moving on. And we're moving on to focusing lens. So, this seasonal mod increases the damage of light abilities by 25% when used against a target that's affected by stasis. However, if you're stood inside a Warlock's Well, then any weapon with a light damaging element also gains that same 25% buff, which means Threaded Needle does. This will stack with Particle Deconstruction as long as it's procced first, I believe, and also Weapons of Light from a Titan Bubble. A breakdown of those numbers is gradually coming onto screen now. So starting with a threaded needle with the perks Liquid Coils, Clown Cartridge and Vorpal Weapon, plus a major spec mod of course, which did 54,526 damage per round. Now if we add the fully stacked 40% debuff from Particle Deconstruction, that damage per round now increases to 76,475. Anyone who might like to double check the numbers, that's a 40.254% increase. Now, let's add the 25% buff from standing in a well with focus and lens. What's very important to note here is that when buff and debuffs etc are stacked, they are compounded. What I mean here is the 25% increase from focus and lens, for example, isn't applied to the base damage value of 54,526, but rather the already increased debuff value of 76,475. Search online for compound interest if you want to understand the principle of this a little more as it's used an awful lot in banking with savings accounts and debt etc. Anyway with that 25% buff from focusing lens, damage per round increases to 95,594. And finally weapons of light, this provides a 35% buff which again is applied to the already increased number from particle deconstruction and focusing lens and brought damage per round to 129,051. Yes, 129,051 damage per single round. And just to add to the compounding point earlier, if we add the percentages up, it suggests around a 100% increase, but the increase from 54,526 up to 129,051 is actually 136.7%. And I believe there are ways to make this higher with certain mods, but I'm going to stop here. Now to keep things somewhat fair, I'm going to use the best average DPS version of tested of Reed's Regret, so enhanced battery, triple tap firing line and a major spec mod, and use damage from that with weapons of light of which that damage was 106,746 per round, remember that's also with particle deconstruction fully stacked as well. 
for the timings, and this is something different for the channel. Since threaded needle requires a Warlock's well for focusing lens, I'm going to assume it's a Lunar Faction well, and therefore max reload speed. But this also means the same should be true for Reed's Regret, so that's also been tested with max reload speed. I'm not including any times in the event that you're the player to proc particle deconstruction or apply stasis to the boss, and I've assumed the well and bubble have been placed prior to a damage phase starting. As there are so many ways this could be set up, it was no use me including any of that, so this is a best case scenario for these weapons, and is only really something that's practical in a raid boss situation. It's a one-off for the channel, I don't really do stuff like this frequently as it's not particularly relevant. I just wanted to see how big the numbers could go. This will be a showdown style comparison with split screen and damage updating live as each weapon fires, Reed's Regret on the left and Threaded Needle on the right, and remember, Threaded Needle also has clown cartridge to rival Reed's Regret triple tap. I'm going to pause the video at the moment each of them empty the first mag to discuss burst DPS, and then let it play out until they're out of reserves, where we'll discuss sustained DPS. So with just 7 in the opening mag, Threaded Needle is the first to reload, and this has already started to comfortably pull ahead. It does fire slightly slower than Reed's Regret due to liquid coils, and you may have noticed the only time the Trials Linear Fusion Rifle pulls ahead is for that split second where it's fired first. Other than that, it can't match this Threaded Needle with Focusing Lens, even with an extra round fired, as you'll see now when I play the clip until Reed's Regret has emptied its first magazine as well. And the thing at this point is, enough rounds have been fired so that the damage difference between these two is greater than a single round from Reed's Regret, which means unless it can get two rounds in front, which it doesn't, it can never overtake Threaded Needle, hence why with an extra round in the opening magazine, it's still behind, letting the video play out and stopping when both have emptied everything in reserves. And the results do speak for themselves. Threaded Needle is a clear winner with little to be analysed on the numbers. How much things could change here if Threaded Needle didn't have Clown Cartridge is up for debate. It wouldn't do as well, but I do think it would still come out on top. And for anyone wondering, the magazine firing pattern for Threaded Needle with Clown Cartridge was 7, 6 and then another 7. Without Clown Cartridge, this would be 4 magazines of 5. So coming onto screen now is the usual DPS ranking table with Reed's Regret and Firing Line numbers added. I haven't included it and Threaded Needle with Focusing Lens, Well and Bubble etc. Because 1. They'll both be at the top anyway, and 2. They can't be compared to anything else, they weren't under normal testing conditions. Pause the video if you want a little more time to look at this as we are moving on to the graph. So, I'm starting with a few common DPS options just for context, those being Sleeper Simulant with a burst from Cartesian Coordinate, Lorentz Driver where every round is with a 40% debuff from Particle Deconstruction and Lagrangian Sight Active, 1k Voices and Threaded Needle with a round from Cartesian, Liquid Coils, Clown Cartridge and Vorpal Weapon. The first read to regret is Liquid Coils, and it's very close to Threaded Needle up to the end of the first magazine, but the longer time goes on, it gradually pulls ahead more and more. It's ahead of Sleeper for the majority of the time, and almost always ahead of 1k. It can't quite match Lorentz Driver, but that can be very awkward to get Lagrangian Sight propped for a damage phase. So up to now, it's actually performed very well. Now for accelerated coils, this is ahead of liquid for any period of time that it's firing, and only falls behind briefly during reloads, however, it does have less total damage. In relation to the other weapons on the graph, it's in a similar standing to liquid, just slightly better at most points in time. Enhanced Battery plus a Major Spec mod, and that extra round allows this to pull ahead for each magazine by such an amount that even after reloading, it doesn't realistically fall behind accelerated coils, and never once can it be matched by liquid coils. Much less total damage, but let's remember this includes two rounds in the final mag that have been omitted, as it artificially lowered the average DPS number. But it was still slightly higher than liquid and accelerated, even with those two rounds included. 
and now enhanced battery with a backup mag mod. Apologies for the slightly cluttered graph now, but this falls behind all other examples of Reed's regret so far, up until the end of the magazine, where of course the extra rounds allow it to pull ahead while the others are reloading. Unfortunately, once this needs to reload, it then falls behind and the cycle repeats. Still, let's not forget this is ahead of most other common options for the majority of time firing, such as sleeper, 1k, and even threaded needle for significant periods of time. So with those out the way, let's bring Reed's regret on, but the example we looked at with bubble, lunar well, reload, etc. And as you might expect, there's not much to say. Far higher damage and faster reloads, as well as no Cartesian at the start, makes it a clear winner, but it was only tested in this manner to compare to threaded needle under the same conditions but with focusing lens, so let's bring that on. And even more damage again means this is in a different lead to Reed's regret, and of course everything else on the graph. Like I discussed during the showdown, despite extra rounds in the mag of Reed's regret, it still can't ever get ahead of Threaded Needle. Don't forget though, these final two weapons cannot be compared to anything else I've tested directly, as nothing else has been tested under the same circumstances. So what would my suggestion be? Well, let's be honest here, you can't really go wrong with any of these Reed's Regret examples. In fact, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the weapons on the graph. Yes, some of them make 1k look like a primary, but it's probably the easiest weapon on here to use as no crits are required. For Reed's Regret, I personally would either take accelerated coils for the faster charge time, as I just like faster charging weapons, or enhanced battery plus a major spec, as the extra round in a mag can be very helpful in specific situations. For a solo player though, Firing line of course isn't ideal, so keep that in mind. I don't have a great deal to say here, we're looking at some of the best DPS I've tested, so use what you feel most comfortable with and provides the most fun. If I was to jump into the game right now and do a VOG run, there's a good chance I'd still just use Sleeper, as I find it fun, it's a little more forgiving to use than the other linear fusion rifles as you don't get punished as hard for a body shot, and it's enough to get the job done with excellent burst DPS. I say it all the time, but I would absolutely love to see this with 4 rounds in the mag, five would be the dream. So again, with little else to say, that is all from me. Plans for future videos still include damage scaling against raid bosses, no I haven't forgot about that, I nearly have every weapon and armor slot at 1330 now, so that's not far off. I want to test different weapon purrings, so two fusions with auto load and perks and holster mods etc. And I'm also looking to include the absolute base numbers for any weapons tested in a table at the end of the video. Well that will increase the time it takes to upload, so I want to find an efficient way to do that before it becomes a regular thing. But until then, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and interesting. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already, and give me any feedback in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.